Hey Jules, are we still on for tonight? Absolutely. Can't wait to see you and Alex. It's been too long since we hung out. I know. Alex keeps asking me where you are and how come you're so busy. I can't believe you guys used to fight like cats and dogs. Now he misses you and we don't get to hang out. <laughs> I'm going to tease him so much about missing me. He just looks tough, but I always knew he's a softie at heart. Joke's part though. I miss you both so much too. Can't wait for you to meet my new boyfriend. Oh, we'll meet him all right. Oh God, why does that sound like a threat? Please be nice to him. Don't interrogate him and don't ask about his intentions with me. But if we don't talk about his intentions, then how will we know if they are good or bad? Claude, I want best behavior from both of you. Don't scare him with your questions. I really like him. Oh, fine. We won't do anything that dramatic. Only because you seem to really like him. How long have you been seeing him? About three months. He moved here from California only six months ago. Please tell me he is not an actor. <laughs> no, he's not an actor. He's a writer. Nice work. You're always into the intellectual types. Don't tell him that. Anyway, I'm going to finish up work and go home. So I'll see you tonight. Don't be late. We'll see you tonight. And we won't be late. I promise. Went home after I was done with my work to get ready. Just when I climbed out of my car, my phone vibrated with an incoming text message. When I looked, I saw Nick's name staring back at me. I grabbed my phone and went to unlock my door before answering his text. After I was inside my apartment, I opened his text. Hey, are you home? Yeah, I just got in a second ago. What's up? I don't know. I'm feeling a little weird about me and your friends. Weird? Why? Just a little nervous. I mean, what if they don't like me? Aw, oh, baby, they're gonna love you. Don't worry about it. I know the way you talk about them. Like they're your family. I don't want to make a bad impression if they mean so much to you. Also, I'm even more scared after hearing about how they didn't like your last boyfriend. Then you broke up with him. Yes, they did hate him, but I broke up with him because he cheated on me. They're just mostly right about my boyfriends, and that's why I trust their judgment. And again, they're going to love you, so you don't have anything to be nervous about. I am sorry to tell you, baby, but you didn't help at all with my nerves. LOL. Pick me up at 7, and I will tell you all the important stuff to remember while you talk to them. Okay, I can get on board with that. See you at 7. You better be home at time. We're leaving at 7. I'm not going to be late. I'm way too excited about meeting the new boyfriend. Yeah, about that, we can't scare him away. She really likes this one. We have strict instructions about behaving ourselves. Aw, oh, man. Scaring our boyfriends is half the fun in meeting them. <laughs> I know, but it's the first meeting, and she seems to really like him. Maybe we can scare him the next time we meet him, lol. What's his name? Nick Green. He's a writer. Nick Green? Wait, is he the murder guy? W what do you mean? He writes murder novels. I've read some of his work, if he is the same guy. I have no idea, but you can ask him at dinner. Get back home soon. Love you. Yeah, I'll be there in a bit. Love you too. At exactly seven, I heard a knock on my door. I found Nick standing on the other side with a smile on his face. I told him to wait while I got my purse, and then we both climbed inside his car. While driving over to the restaurant, I told him everything he needed to know about Claudia and Alex to loosen up his nerves. He did get a little relaxed. After going inside the restaurant, I immediately caught sight of my friends sitting at a corner table. We both made our way to them, and I introduced the three of them to each other. We had a lovely dinner together. I caught up with my friends, and they were really nice to Nick as well. He seemed very relaxed while talking to them. Everything went so well, and then we all said our goodbyes and drove in separate directions. I went to Nick's place for the night, and when I woke up the next day, I had a text from Claudia. Good morning, sunshine. I had a great time last night. 
We should do it again. Okay, what's the verdict? What? (laughs) There's no verdict. We liked him. But? But he seems a little off, doesn't he? What does that mean? I swear sometimes you guys just make up flaws if you don't like someone I'm dating. I'm not making up anything. We liked him fine, but he was a little strange. He was just nervous about meeting you guys. Maybe. Anyway, Alex was really happy when he found out that he was the author of those books he has. Yeah, Nick was happy about that too. He loved talking to Alex about potential book ideas. Have you read any of his work? Nah, he's too shy to let me read his books. What kind of author is shy about letting someone read their books? See, strange. Oh, cut it out. He's not strange. He just doesn't want me to judge his work. If you say so. By the way, Alex thinks he's strange too. Alex thinks all my boyfriends are strange. Seriously, Claude, he is good. We're good. Okay, I'm good if you're good. I'll talk to you later. I'm late for work. Okay, bye. Have a good day. It was my day off and Nick was out running some errands, so I just watched TV at his place and ordered some food. Nick texted me that he will be home late, so I just tidied up the place a little and took a shower. While I was getting out of the shower, my phone rang with a notification alert. My eyes went over to the screen, which flashed Alex's name on the top. Your boyfriend is shady. (sighs) Not this again. Claudia already told me that you guys think he's strange. Whatever that means. No, I'm not calling him strange, Jules. He's shady. What do you mean? Can you guys please stop talking riddles and tell me directly what you mean? Okay, you know that I've read a couple of his books, right? And Claude told me that you haven't read any of his work. Yeah, what about it? He writes these really gruesome and detailed murder mysteries. Too detailed, if you ask me. So, he's a good writer. What's your point? My point is, I think he might be writing him from personal experiences. LOL, what? Are you crazy? Why would you think that? You think these things happened to him and he didn't tell me? No, Jules, I don't think these things happened to him. I think he did it to other people. Okay, so you're going insane. Alex, you can't just accuse him of killing people because you don't like him. I'm saying these things because I don't like him. I'm saying these things because I researched about him. It might not be true, but I had to inform you. Whatever you're saying is definitely not true, but please enlighten me about what you found. Okay, so I was checking his social media after I had a chat with him last night. Someone crossed an old photo of his and he had his arm around a girl. Someone went on her page and her account has not been active for four years. She was tagged in a bunch of I miss you posts, so I googled her. She's been missing for four years. That's when his first book came out. His first book was about a girl who went missing, later on found dead. The killer was her boyfriend. I thought that was odd because it seemed like he was her boyfriend at the time she got on missing. That doesn't prove anything at all. So what if a girl went missing and he wrote about her? And that girl hasn't been found dead. She's just missing. Okay, fair enough. I was looking into him, I found an article claiming that author Nick Green was associated with an apartment fire in L.A. where a girl was found dead. And that said girl was his girlfriend at the time. That's what his second book is about. And his second book, Killer, is again the girl's boyfriend. And she was burned alive inside her house. Someone wrote a whole article about it, Jules. I'm not crazy. You are sounding crazy, though. But fine. I don't know him enough, so let me do my own research before you do something drastic. I haven't read his third book, but I googled it. It's also a murder, sir, where a girl gets murdered by her boyfriend. Not to spook you or anything, but it looks like a pattern. Stop filling things in my head. It's probably nothing, but sure, I'll look into it. Be careful, and text me or Claude anytime you want. Okay, I'll talk to you later. 
I know Alex and Claudia don't approve of my boyfriends because they love me and think I deserve the best, but they've gone really far this time. Using someone of these kinds of things? It's honestly funny. They got in my head and now I can't rest till I figure this all out myself. I pull up the article Alex told me about and read it in its entirety. There's a photo of him and a beautiful blonde girl attached with the article. The article was just the beginning. After that, I went down a rabbit hole of clicking articles after articles about missing girls and dead bodies. Tears spring in my eyes as I read an article about how a family of a dead girl is mad about author Nick Green's novel detailing every single thing about the murder. He wrote the book after the news came out, so he might have gotten the information from the media. I tried to make up my mind that this doesn't prove anything, but my head kept yelling at me to look around and see if there's really anything strange about him. So I got up and searched his drawers, his cupboards, and every cabinet in his house. It came up short, but when I tried to open a closet in his home office, it wouldn't budge. It was locked, and I found it very weird that he would lock a closet out of everything in the house. I stared at it for a whole lot of time, but then curiosity got the best of me, and I pried open the closet door with a bobby pin. There was nothing out of the ordinary in there. Just a bunch of files and loose papers, some manuscripts for his novels, but nothing he would want to lock. So I went through the pages and manuscript till I found one with my name on it. I started reading it skeptically, but was shocked when I saw he wrote everything about our relationship since the first day we met. But the boyfriend in this manuscript was planning to murder his girlfriend, me in his head. I thought it was just a piece of fiction, but every other detail was the exact same as it happened with us. That's when it clicked in my mind. The murder details were instructions. It's how he's going to do it to finish up this novel. Fear rushed through my veins as I collected my things and ran out of the house. Got a text from him and I replied so he wouldn't be suspicious. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Okay, hurry back. After texting him, I ran to the nearest police station, told the cops everything. I texted Alex and him, and Claudia both rushed to me. Newspaper article the next day after the incident. Author Nick Green arrested for multiple murders after his girlfriend finds a manuscript describing the details of her gruesome murder. Apparently, all of his books are based on his real-life girlfriends that he murdered in the last five years. Reporters say that the body of his first victim was found after four years when the cops searched the exact place he wrote in his book. Readers loved his work, but it seemed realistic. Realistic had a whole other meaning to him. Families of the three victims found some relief after getting closure and justice for the victims.